So we're going to take a look at the uh, problem from page, I believe it's page 275, and this is the, uh, the Great Pyramid, and we were asked to find this base angle. Now the first thing that people run into with a question like this, and with most 3D problems, is that they're difficult to visualize. You've got this, in this case, a fairly good three-dimensional diagram, but you're always better off breaking that out into two dimensions. And the first step of that is actually going to be to put some labels on here. So I'm going to put on A, B, and C at the front. And I'm also going to label A, B, C, and then I'm going to label D and E inside. And uh, later on I might actually add another one to help explain something that we're going to talk about. But that's good enough for now. So let's take a look at each of these triangles. Now the first one, I'm just going to pull it straight down here. That's the triangle ABC. So I'm just going to redraw that as a simple triangle without all the clutter of the other things. So I'll relabel that ABC. And we are, and actually we are given the side length 230, 230 meters. And we are asked to find this base angle. So I'll just change that. This is our goal, right there. That is the base angle, theta. That's what we're interested in finding. Now let's take a look at another triangle that we've got from this, which is the triangle ADE, and I'm going to draw that off to the side. So there is the triangle ADE. And we are given some information about this one as well. We know that this is a right angle. And we're told that this corner angle at the, at the vertex E is equal to 52 degrees. We actually have one additional piece of information on this triangle because, and now this is where I'm going to introduce uh, another label, so an extra label that's, that's going to be helpful for me. I've got A, B, C, and I've got D and E. Out here on the back corner, I'm actually going to label F. And if you think about it, the triangle a, B, C, that's one face of this pyramid, and then I've got another face, which is A, C, F. And I actually have four faces of this pyramid. Well, all of those faces are actually identical to each other. So I'm going to make use of the fact that the triangle A, B, C is congruent or identical to the triangle A, C, F. And because of that, because the triangle ABC and ACF are congruent, then if I draw the triangle, I draw the triangle ACF here. Here's the triangle ACF, and once again, because these triangles are congruent, the angle theta goes in both of those triangles. It's the exact same. But there's an interesting addition here, which is if we look on our diagram, maybe I'll use the highlighter to show that on the diagram. If we look on our diagram along this diagonal, that goes from A to E. Well, that's also this diagonal, A to E. And it turns out that it is from here. down to there. So there is the point E on that other triangle. Now that's actually very useful for us. I'll put in the right angle. And that's really useful because now we have a way to connect our triangle from the interior of the pyramid to the exterior face of the pyramid. And the exterior face has the angle theta, which is what we want. So there's one more thing I need to do to tie these things together. 230 meters from B to C means that it's also 230 meters from C to F. And if that's the case, then we can quite reasonably say that the distance from E to F is equal to 115 meters, half. And the distance from D to E, maybe I need to explain that one a little bit further. Imagine on our pyramid, if we drew the other line that went through the center. So if we drew another line through the center, well, that would appear at this point, 
but this point is also halfway between. So these two sides are going to be equal to that length right there, and it's going to be equal to that length. You can imagine if we just started breaking up this pyramid, we'd end up with all of these different, different lengths, and all of them are 115 meters. So that means that this side, DE, is, and I'm just going to write it here, DE is equal to BC divided by 2, that's equal to 115 meters. So that 115 is going to be very useful to us as well. So we've got these triangles, we've related them all together, so let's actually start doing some trigonometry here. So I'll start over on my blue triangle, and I have two pieces of information, I have an angle and I have a side. So I'm going to write out Sokotoa, and I'm going to take a look at what do I have. So for this triangle, across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. Across from 52 degrees is the opposite side, and next to 52 degrees is the adjacent side. So I have, the way I like to do this is I like to label, I like to label what I've got here. So I have the adjacent side, so I'm going to put a little check mark down for each of those for the adjacent side. Now that I've marked the adjacent sides, what else am I interested in? Am I interested in the hypotenuse or the opposite side? I'm interested in the hypotenuse, AE, because that links up here, get the highlighter again, with AE. So I, that, there's my connection between these triangles. So let's go back to uh, here, and we want the hypotenuse. So we, I'm going to put a little question mark there, and you can see it's obviously cosine that has two of the three things. So I'm going to use cosine to find uh, the hypotenuse. So I'm going to say the cosine of 52 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is 115 over the hypotenuse, which I'm going to call AE. I'm just going to use the labels. You could label that side as a single variable if you wanted to, X or something like that. So what do I do at this point? In order to get, uh, I, want, I want AE equal to something. So the easiest way to do that, or the most straightforward way to do that, is to multiply both sides by AE, which gets it out of the denominator. And I end up with AE cosine of 52 degrees is equal to 115. And I divide both sides by cosine of 52 degrees. And I end up with AE is equal to 115 over the cosine of 52 degrees. AE is approximately equal to, and I'm just going to use my calculator to come up with this one. And I end up with 115 divided by the cosine of 52 is equal to 186 point. 7910 and that's rounded to four decimal places. I could also keep the exact the exact value from the previous line. Um, and actually I'm keeping all of the digits in my calculator, so technically I'm using the exact value as I go forward. So now the next step, let's take a look at we're going to try to find the value for theta. And for theta, I actually, I don't need this whole uh, triangle ACF. I actually only need part of this triangle ACF. So I'm going to break off just the part of the triangle that I need, which is the right triangle AEF. And you can probably see why that's useful to me, because AE is this value. So that goes there. The angle theta is what we've been asked for for this question. That's what we're interested in. And we actually know EF, we know that's 115 meters. So we have the information we need to solve this one. So again, Sokotoa, we'll write out our mnemonic. And we take a look at what do we know and what don't we know. So we should label the sides with respect to the angle of interest, which is theta. As always, across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. Directly across from theta is the opposite. So that means this value, 186.7910, is the opposite. 
and then we have the adjacent, which is going to be 115. So we know the opposite, that's what we calculated. We know the adjacent, and I'm obviously going to use tangent here. So I write the tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, 186.7910 divided by 115. And I could resolve that. Let's go ahead and turn that into an actual value. Now remember I told you I'm actually using the value still stored in my calculator, which I'm then just going to divide by 115. And that gives me a value of approximately 1.6243. And then I take the inverse tangent of that value, 1.6243. 3, but again, I'm keeping all of my digits, and I end up with, so with no actual rounding having taken, pl t taken place here, I end up with 58.38 degrees. And the question, if you look back at what the question asked for, it actually asked for the nearest degree. So I'm going to give my final answer, therefore, the base, that's really awful. I'm trying not to cover up the microphone as I, as I write here, so let me just write on the right hand side, makes it easier. Therefore, the base angle is 58 degrees. And that's it, that's the end of our question. So you can see the key to this question really was to label Label the pyramid if you've got a good 3D drawing. And then from that drawing, break out the two-dimensional drawings. And you try to form some sort of relationship between the values in all three of those drawings. So for example, we took the value of 230 meters and we used that to find these values of 115. That was one of the relationships. And then we had this side AE, we were able to relate to this vertical line AE in the face triangle as well. And then from there, it's really simple right angle trigonometry. Be careful with your calculations. Um, keep as many decimal places as you can going forward until you get to a final answer and only round when you're reporting your final answer. Okay, I hope that was helpful. And uh, we'll see if this goes well. I'll put some others online.